Hi friends and companions along this path of spiritual practice. There are two dimensions of our existence that are often spoken about as being in tension with one another. That mode of being and that mode of doing. Doing and being often in tension with one another, but the noted psychoanalyst and social philosopher Eric Fromm wanted to clarify that, that it wasn't just about being versus doing. There's a kind of doing that is simply an expression of our being, of who we are and what we value, and so it's expressed through all the activities of our doing. And there's no tension there between that kind of expressive doing and our being. But Eric Fromm spoke about that kind of doing that is not an expression of our being. It's a frenetic, busy, distracted, anxious kind of doing that is an expression of our lack of being or a certain anxiety of our being, or the vulnerability of our being that we experience. And so Fromm introduces a kind of doing that is about having. Being, doing, and having. We get busy doing that is really about having something to make up for a deficit in our being, a lack in our being, some vulnerability or anxiety we feel about our being. This kind of move to having is about having materials, about property, about things. It's about having work. But the having can also be about people and relationships and friendships. We have people and relationships to make up for or to cover for this anxious being. Or Fromm also says there's a kind of having that is about knowledge and information. Information and knowledge that we have that again seeks to address a certain vulnerability or uncertainty at the core of our being. Fromm came to this notion of having and saw a remarkable resemblance with the Buddhist notion of tanha, of craving, of grasping after something that is not that different from having. To lay hold of something that will be our possession, to make up for some inadequacy in being. And yet, Fromm and Buddhism both say that no amount of having things, people, knowledge and information, status, no amount of having can compensate for the issues that reside in the question of being. This is a categorical mistake. A plenitude of having does not mean that we have an abundance of being. I am what I have, what I own, is a categorical mistake. In the archetypal story of Siddhartha's awakening, Siddhartha is sheltered in a palace and the palace is filled with all sorts of things that anyone would wish to have. The palace is a symbol of all that we do in order to have, to possess. And yet, the Prince Siddhartha finds himself outside the walls of that palace and he runs into aging sickness, death, and spirituality. These four that are 
symbols of being. No amount of having inside the palace can address the challenges and the questions that come with aging and sickness and death and the question of our spirituality, these modes of being. I want to add to what extent whiteness itself is a property. In 1993, Cheryl Harris wrote a seminal paper on whiteness as property. That somehow whiteness, which gives white people an advantage in the acquisition of property, that whiteness itself has become a form of property. That whiteness gives us something to have that covers for something uncertain, anxious, vulnerable at the core of our being. Du Bois and other thinkers have raised that question about the human soul, and more specifically about the soul of white people and black people. How does whiteness as a form of having, having property, having access, having privilege, rather than invite us to look more closely at our soul. Whiteness as a form of property is another attempt that reveals a categorical mistake. And so friends, our meditation practice lets go of and quiets all the frenetic doing that is about having, having the things that might placate the yearning in our being. That as we sit into meditation, we befriend the question of being, and we find courage, we find resilience, we find a way to step more authentically into the question of our being. And so we continue with our practice.